And we're back. Another football season. Another Dallas Cowboys season. Let's talk about it. It's your boy, Billy Mack. Back with another boys podcast. Uh, Solo dolo like usual. I want a co-host. Any Cowboy fans want to join me? I mean, it, it would be nice. It'll help the content. Talking to me, feel like I'm talking to myself, but I'm talking to y'all. Let's have a conversation about these goddamn cowboys. Um, I want to start by let's let's go over training camp. Training camp is technically officially over, or at least they'll start um having preseason games. Excuse me, water is a uh, Food for the soul. This is a podcast, so I can be as casual as I need to. <sighs> Shout out to Tony Baker. Some of that beer book. But anyway, um, Let's talk about training camp. So, training camp is over. We're officially starting the preseason games. Um, congratulations to the Raiders on winning their game. Um, need to know Josh Jacobs played two quarters. Okay. Uh, uh, and congratulations to the Hall of Fame class of 2022. In those boys. In fact, let's... Let, Listen, listen, I am like, I didn't keep up with it. <laughs> I did not keep up with it. Let's look at, uh, let's look at, okay, Tony Baselli. Um, not, not clear on who Cliff Branch is. Leroy Butler, Sam Mills, Richard Seymour, Georgia Boy. Uh, Bryant Young, Dick Vermeil, and Art McNally. Okay. It's a very, it's a very, I guess the word would be, um, it's a very low-key class. It's a very, very low-key class. Um, gripe number one. Leroy Butler got in. Darren Woodson is not in the Hall of Fame. I'm just going to leave it at that. Darren Woodson, not in the Hall of Fame. But anyway, okay. Back to, back to the Cowboys. Um, so, uh, training camp is over. Uh, I'm going to give you, let's, let's do the good from training camp. Let's, let's, let's go over the good. Number one out the gate is not even it's not even close. The defense, ladies and gentlemen, the Dallas Cowboys might have one of the best, might have the best defense in the league this year. It is quite possible, and it, it we have so much depth at defensive line and so much depth at linebacker. It is crazy. The corners look good. The safeties look good. I mean, uh, what's his name? I think his name is Marcus Bell out of uh, FAMU. We draft, he was an undrafted uh, free agent. And um, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. He was an undrafted free agent. I, I hope they updated. I'm going, I'm going to the website. I hope they updated the depth chart. I hope they updated the depth chart. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the safeties. Marquise Bell. Marquise Bell. Marquise Bell. Yeah, Florida A and M. Yeah. Let me tell y'all something, man. This dude was undrafted. And they said he he freaking showed his behind. And 
he's my, look, 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 I just went over. Now, granted, they haven't had any cuts yet. They haven't had any cuts yet, but I mean, let's let's just talk about for the longest time the Dallas Cowboys c- couldn't buy safety. Okay? They couldn't buy safety. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven safeties on the roster. Obviously, that number is going to get cut off. Um Wanye Thomas, rookie out of Georgia Tech. I, I haven't heard your name all. I haven't heard your name through a train during all of training camp. Uh Israel McQuamu, J. Ron Curse, Malik Hooker, Tyler Coyle, and Marquise Bell. Tyler Coyle might be on the chopping block. But when I but Marquise Bell, Malik Hooker, J. Ron Curse, and Israel McQuamu, I mean, it's solid. It's solid, especially especially since we got J. Ron Curse at a very low price. I mean, you can't beat this. You can't beat this. It's it's a beautiful thing to have. So the defense is solid. We should have no issues on defense. A uh, barn in injury. Barn injury. We should have no problems on defense. That's good thing number one. Dan, shout out to Dan Quinn and them boys. Dan Quinn, A uh Aiden Darty, and um um Joe Witt Jr. Ben. Let's get it. Let's get it. That's number one. Number two. Number two. Number two best thing for the Dallas Cowboys. Mike McCarthy. I I have to give him his props on this. First of all, if y'all haven't seen Mike McCarthy, the man has slimmed down. Okay, that's that that's a that's that's a side thing. I don't I don't believe in hold. I mean I don't I don't I'm not. Let's not even go there. Let's just not go there. Mike McCarthy is let's give let's let's respect this man on how he helps his players stay healthy. Okay? The Dallas Cowboys were the most healthiest team last year going into the playoffs. And it's because he's been very diligent in checking players, GPS. Uh, how many plays they're doing and this, that, and the other. There was one time during training camp where they actually had to sit C.D. Lamb out. And they thought it was an in- All the reporters and everything thought it was an injury. They thought something was wrong. With- no. The man, he had been working too hard. And he don't want him to get injured. Like, okay, thank you. Thank you. Because... You, 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 as as I'll discuss later on, all we all we really got is C.D. Lamb, but you know, so I respect Mike McCarthy for that. The man is consistent, and I hope what he's doing will keep this team healthy again this year. Third thing I third thing I noticed about uh, training camp. Zeke is clear that he is not the same running back that he used to be. This is going to be a Zeke and Tony Pollard offense. At least that's how it seems. Okay? Which goes into my next point. Offensive line looks a little better. It just looks a little better. There's progress. There's progress. You know what I mean? There's progress. And lastly, and I guess what would be the most important thing, your quarterback looks good. He looks good. He done slimmed down. It looks like he's in, he's doing more anticipatory passes. I don't even know if that's a word. Um, which is what was kind of missing last year. He he, you know, and and I know there's a lot of cowboy fans that are kind of getting um impatient with Dak. But the one thing you cannot say about Dak Prescott, the man has gotten better every single year. He is not the same guy from 2016. He's not the same guy from 17. He's not the same guy from 18. Definitely not the same guy from 19, obviously. He's not the same guy from last year. The guy gets better every 
year. And it seems like he's gotten better again. Now, the passes that he's making, very, he's making some tight window throws. He's making some, very, he's anticipating where his guy's going to be a lot more. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. I'm all with it. Let's get it. Okay? Now, the bag. And, and, and for the real Cowboy fans, I know y'all sitting back and saying, okay, the good stuff was pretty good. I mean, I mean at least the defense is going to be good, but Everything else you said is is kind of moot moot at this at this um time. And you're exactly right. I made a list. That's how bad that's how bad the bads are. I made a list. Okay? That that the good stuff was off the top of the dome. I probably forgot some stuff. I don't care. The bad stuff is the bad stuff for a reason. We always fo- we're human. We focus on the bad stuff all the time. And and the bad stuff is really bad. Okay? Number one, the kicker. This is and it, this is in the order of from bad to worse. Number one, the kicker. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two kickers on the rock. Let me find. We have two kickers on the rock. We have a Lirum Halaralahu. Halaralahu, I'm I'm guessing. Um, yeah, Lirum Halaralahu. Halaralahu. And Jonathan Garibay. Okay? The The word out of camp is that the guys, these two guys, both, both, I think I'm talking about kind of mic down. These two guys, okay, are on their best days, 75% of their kids. All I'm going to say is this. There was a time we had a guy by the name of Kai Forbath. We brought in Kai Forbath because I think uh, either Zerlon got injured. I don't even know if Zerlon was on the team at that time. No, no, Zerlon wasn't on the team. Somebody, our kicker at the time got injured because Dan Bailey had already left by then. But our kicker at the time got injured and we brought in Kai Forbath. And Kai Forbath was perfect. Perfect for the short time he was there. Perfect. Made every kick we asked him to make. They released him and he's never heard from him again. And, and, and thus, that's when Greg Zerline came. And granted, Greg, we Greg Zerlock can hit a 60-yard field goal. Yes, that's nice. But why are you missing extra points? Why are you missing extra points? I, I'm sorry. There is my philosophy when it comes to kicking. Make your extra points and be a deep kicker. Which is exactly kind of what Greg Zerline is, but the thing is, if I put it like this, I would like Zerline if he would make all of his extra points. If he made his extra points, no problem, no problem. You ain't got to worry about it. You ain't got to worry about it. No problem. I got you. But he's not even making his extra points, y'all. He's not even making his extra points. I can't. I can't. No. Let's bring somebody else in. Now, it's practice. It is training camp. When we get into game time, for all we know, these kickers might show up and show out. They might be gamers like that. 
it is well it is well documented that Dak is not the best practice player. He is game time ready all day long. So we will see. The kicker. Oh my God. Oh my God. Number two. Kellen Moore. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going, I'm just going. Let's use some common sense for a second. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you the scenario. The Dallas Cowboys defense was already good. Okay. You drafted a Micah Parsons. In fact, no, let's let's go even further back. The Dallas Cowboys defense was horrid under Mike Nolan. You bring in Dan Quinn. At the beginning of the season last year, all we said to ourselves was, hey, we're expecting the offense to score 30 to 40 points a game. We just need the defense to be decent. Can y'all keep teams to 21 points? That's all we need. Lo and behold, we draft a Micah Parsons, an off-ball linebacker, in the first round. Who drafts an off-ball linebacker with a first-round pick? The dude... I, I'm just saying, Rashawn Slater was there. I just, I'm just thinking we should have got Rashawn Slater because of the history with Tyron Smith, Tyron Smith. But you know, I, I'm not, I, I don't work in the front office. I wish I did, but I don't. Okay. You drafted Micah Parsons. You pick up some guy by the name of. J. Ron Kurz, who's been a career backup. In fact, he was literally, he had one foot out of the league because the, the word on the street was he didn't care about football. The word on the street was he didn't care about football. Okay. Then, um, yeah. And that was like, yeah. And then, We played the season. And Dan Quinn said, you know what? Michael Parsons looks like a defensive end. He runs. He's fast. He's strong. Let's play him at defensive end. And it worked. Dan Quinn said, man, this safety right here, he, you know, I don't know what the league sees in him, but, you know, he seems like. He he can play some football. Let's go ahead and put him in the starting lineup. And he never came off. These are the things that make a great coach. Now, let's look at Kelly. Hey, um, your running back clearly looks like he's injured. Why don't we try to play the other guy or at least put Zeke in situations where he can win? Nah. Nah, we just going to keep doing the same. Hey, Amari Cooper clearly looks injured. He doesn't practice. He doesn't practice at all during the week. Why don't we go ahead and let him be, you know, why don't we put him in in some spec- special packages, and why don't we focus on C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup as our premier receivers? No, no, Amari is the guy. We we gonna we gonna keep doing what we doing. Hey, there's a lot of teams out here that they do they put a lot of players in motion. You know they they focus on uh, putting guys on defense in certain mitch matches and. And stuff like that. Why don't we utilize a little bit of trickery on offense? No, no, we we just going to keep doing the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't realized what I'm trying to explain to you, the definition of insanity is when you keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. From the word out of training camp is that Kellen Moore has not evolved this offense. He is not he has not increased Tony Pollard. Zeke is still the bell cow back. They don't seem to want to focus on CeeDee Lamb. 
I, I, I mean, what are we doing here? And then the most egregious thing about it, Mike McCarthy called plays when he was at Green Bay. He was the play caller. He won a Super Bowl as the play caller. Now, I know what some of y'all are saying. Hey, he had Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is clearly. I mean, Tom Brady wins a lot, but Aaron Rodgers is probably the greatest talent at quarterback we've seen since Dan Marino. Like the greatest, just like overall throwing talent that we've seen since Dan Marino. Okay? So let's be real. All right? Let's be real. Having a great quarterback does help, but sir, you called plays for that man, and it clearly worked. Ladies and gentlemen, as of right now, the future looks bleak for the offense of the Dallas Cowboys. On to number three. Speaking of C.D. Lamb, the wide receiver situation. The wide receiver situation. Now, I, I mean, I mean, and this this is kind of an indictment on Kelly Moore too. Dan Quinn, I mean, look, I, the word out of camp is Leighton Van Der Esch is playing better, Jabril Cox is playing better, Micah Parsons is getting better, Dante Fowler and Sam Williams are looking for breakout seasons. Demarcus Lawrence and slim down, so he's bringing speed off the edge now. John Ridgeway and Quentin Bohanna are 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 legitimate one technique guys that are going to help stop the run. I mean, and then and then Dan Quinn had the nerve, the audacity to say, "I think we can use an Anthony Barr." Hey Jerry, can I have Anthony Barr? Oh yeah, yeah, I. I Only wants two million a year. I, I think we. You know. I mean, the man just—he's making things better. Jerry Jones said in an interview, one hundred five three to pan during G, G Bag Nation. Shout out to them boys: Gavin Dawson, Brian Boston, Brian Broaddus, Eric Chiafalo, Jack Zach Walchuk, and Lucy. That's my boy. Because he, yeah, look, y'all, Lucius be doing some things behind the scenes. Y'all be ready. I'll put it like this. If you're a person of color, you know exactly what he's doing. But anyway, um, shout out to the G-Bag Nation. But during an interview with Jerry Jones, they asked him, hey, James Washington is out. Uh, we going we gonna to sign another wide receiver to help the team out? Jerry Jones was basically, in so many words, like, nah, we good. Why y'all Why y'all concerned about it? We, we good. Mind you, Michael Gallup is still injured. We're hoping he'll be back week one. But the, the consensus is, we're, the projection is, it's going to be week two or later. All we got is C.D. Lamb. Now, Jalen Tolbert supposedly looks good. But he's a rookie. We can only ask so much of him. And we got T.J. Vasher. And we got Noah Brown. They said Noah Brown has a good camp. But guess what? Noah Brown has a good camp every year. And then he gets in the game and he drops passes. So... I, I mean, they said Simi Fajoko's doing better. I hope he can be a red zone threat. In fact, let me look up. Let me look up. Because he's a, he's a big dude. He 6'3", 220. 6'3", 220. So, shoot, TJ Vash are taller than him, but he tiny. He only 2'10". Dennis Houston, Noah Brown, 
Brandon Smith. Who is that? Who is Brandon Smith? I ain't even heard his name. But it, regardless, the depth at wide receiver is trash. It's trash. I I don't see anybody that's going to threaten the defense other than CD. So once again, looking back at Kellen Moore, do you have something in place that's going to help CD get off double cut? Because if I'm a defense, my mindset is, hey, man, just double CD and, and make that Prescott make good throws. And right now, I don't think he can. The the one bright spot is the guy they brought in from the um, USFL, uh, Kevante Turpin. They say the guy got speed like crazy. Like, as of right now, we're good at kick return. Kick and punt return, we are straight because of this guy. It's a great signing. But as of right now, <clears throat> excuse me, as of right now, we this is this is it. What more? What 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 are y'all gonna do, Dallas? What are y'all gonna do at wide receiver? It, this is ridiculous. Y'all better sign somebody. Some y'all like like when stuff like this happens. I always give the benefit of the doubt that they, obviously they mo- know more than we do. We're just fans. We don't have game tape. We're not we're not in the coach's room. We, we we don't know what these guys are doing behind closed doors because I know for a fact that Dak Prescott gets with these guys and they practice behind closed doors on, on at certain times. So we don't know everything, but there is a level of, dare I say, just, um, um, oh, what's the word? There's a level of um, optimism that we we're not getting with these guys. They clearly have it. We don't see it. And this and this goes back to the original point that I said last year when I was going over the offseason, the offseason reviews for for every position, just in general, this is this should have should have been a rebuild season. But Jerry ain't gonna do that. Jerry ain't going to do that. Number four, Tyler Smith. First round pick, guard out of Tulsa, I believe. I believe he's out of Tulsa. Let's see. Is he out of Tulsa? Tyler Smith. Yep, Tulsa. Tyler Smith out of Tulsa. 663 30. Good call. Um here's the thing. This this is not a this is not about Tyler Smith being a bad player. In fact, I should have put him in the list of the good things. Tyler Smith is good. He's good. He's clearly going to be Tyron Smith's replacement. That is that is clear cut. That is clear as day. Ladies and gentlemen, why is he not playing left guard? Throughout all of training camp, this man played. First of all, he played on the second team. Second of all, he only played on the left side. What are we doing? The man needs reps. He, he, I mean... (laughs) He he ain't he ain't gonna. We gotta go up against Aaron Donald again this year. It's probably the third time in the last four years, maybe the fourth time in the last five that we've had to face the Rams. He's got to go up against Aaron Donald. We I mean the man needs reps. The man needs reps, and it seems like they farting around with him. One second he's over here, and that second he's over there. Then he playing on the second team. No, 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 no. He needs to start. And and granted, there's there's a I say there's a seventy percent chance that he does start for the first team. There's a seventy percent chance he he's 
going to be the starting left guard. Why are y'all keeping this a secret? What's the point? What is the point? Everybody and their mama knew when the Chargers drafted Rashawn Slater, he was going to be the left tackle. It was, it was not a secret. And you know what he did? He played left tackle. He was at left tackle during training camp. He was at left tackle during the preseason. He was the starting left tackle during the season. And he played the whole season at left tackle. What are y'all doing? What, what are y'all doing? Put, Ty, put Tyler Smith in this and let him get his work so he'll be ready when the season begins. Stop wasting our time as fans and the coach's time and put his behind in it. Which now goes into my fifth and the most concerning thing of the Dallas Cowboys. If y'all don't put Tyler Smith in there, the offensive line will be trash again. And if the offensive line is trash again, the offense is going to be trash again. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I love Tyron Smith. He's been an anchor for this team for the for the last decade. His body is starting to break down. I'm hoping we get. I'm just hoping. I'm hoping we get ten games out of him because I think in those ten games we can win, and then he's ready for the playoffs. That's that's my hope. That is my hope. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm praying for it, and I'm hoping for it. And then Tyler Smith, put him at left guard. Please put him at left guard. So we can have some strength on the line, so when we decide to run the ball, it won't be a problem. And then secondly, secondly, the word on the street is that Terrence still has regressed. The word on the streets that Terrence still was getting manhandled by Dante Fowler and Sam Rookie, Sam Williams, who's a rookie. What what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? What is going on? That's the word on the street. Now we'll see when we play Denver. Um, this Saturday, but boy, this is not good. I don't like it one bit. I don't like it one bit at all. I don't like it one bit at all. This, this is not good. It needs to change. The one good spot about the offensive line is that supposedly Ty Tyler Biotis has gotten a lot better, which is a good thing. But still, it ain't enough to give me confidence that our offensive line play is going to be better than it was last year. I have not seen any progress other than Tyler Biotti. And I wouldn't even call his progress like progress. He, I mean, he's gotten better. You're supposed to get better every year. Um, he's, still, he's still a young guy. So, yeah, I mean, okay. But... The fact of the matter is, the offensive line is hands down the most concerning thing about the Dallas Cowboys. It's not even close. Not even close. Not even close. Not even close, guys. Not even. Close. Not even close. That's my time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hope for the best. Let's hope for a great season. I need to do a video going over the whole season. Um, wins and what I believe the wins and losses. I did that earlier, but now that we have new information, I think it I think it's good. We can we should revisit that. But um, yeah. I'm your boy B. I'm your boy. I can't. It's your boy, Billy Mac. Thank you for watching. Please like. Please subscribe. I'll holler at you next time. Peace.